thank you for joining us. I'm thrilled to be participating in the Asylum Hill Congregational Church's annual Arts and Spirituality Retreat. This year, Freeing the Artist Within at Home is our answer to COVID. Um, my name is David Rao. I'm Director of Education and Outreach at the Florence Griswold Museum in Old Lyme, Connecticut, where I do a lot of creative program, um, including collage, which we'll be working on today. Uh, I happen to be married to Dan Hansen, who is the man who spearheads this event for the church, and it was his brainchild to move the whole thing online this year, sending you the box filled with wonderful art materials and having access to these videos. So enjoy, here we go. I am thrilled each year when the folks at Asylum Hill ask me to participate. Um, I usually do a couple of events for them. I open up with a Friday night creative activity for everybody included, and then I do a kind of a paper-based or miniature book-based project um, during the day. And so this year, knowing that we were going to be doing it all virtually, I wanted to do something that would be very meaningful um, but easy to transport. And so that's when I came up with the idea of doing Collage College. Um, uh, you know, Collage College, hard to say, um, but also, also known as Rip It Up, cut it out and glue it all down. Um, collage is a pretty simple art form that almost anybody should be able to do. And with everything, you get better as you practice. It's a skill um, as you hone your eye and you get better and better at it. Um, I remember waking up one day and I just needed to make a collage. And I started tearing up uh, pictures from magazines and started cutting them apart and then started gluing them down on a big piece of paper. Um, they were pretty terrible at the beginning, but I really enjoyed doing them, and they were doing, and I was doing them just for myself. So I'm going to give you some of the tips that I've learned um, along the way. Um, I saw, I've gotten so into uh, collage that I actually took two classes, one at the RISD for Continuing Education for Adults, and also at Connecticut College with one of their premier collage and assemblage teachers. So I feel pretty well versed in how to make collages, uh, and I want to share some of, my t uh, some of my tricks with you today. So collage basically comes from the French, meaning to glue. Um, and it started off with Picasso and Brock just finding pieces of paper and cardboard and um, gluing them in compositions that were kind of modern uh, and pleasing to the eye. Um, and now today, you can, you know, collage is much more widely known as you know, just bringing disparate things together. You can do a collage of pictures on a wall or a collage of you know, images uh, from your Facebook page. But what we're going to do is uh, assemble uh, images, uh, patterns and fabric that I've put in the bag for you that I've just culled um, or gathered over the last couple of years in my hunt for really good collage materials. I want to show you just a few collages that I brought today just to give you an idea of the kinds of materials that you can use. Um, this is a collage that I made a few years ago. Um, if you can believe it, the man is actually from a Montgomery Ward's uh, underwear ad from an old catalog. And I, I was inspired by him, and then I got a playing card with a heart on it, and then I just went through a bunch of magazines until I could spell out the word heart. Maybe it was a Valentine intentional. Um, I kind of loved the silver paper, and so I repeated that several places so it looked kind of like a mirror. Um, and then I found this crown. And so it's kind of silly, and you just kind of keep playing with your image until it kind of works out. And I kind of have this, doesn't have a real story, doesn't have a real meaning, but I have the king of hearts here, sitting in his underwear. And again, this size is perfect for a small gift, put it in a frame, or also mailing it. There's a whole, um, a, a couple years ago at the Asylum Hill, I taught a course on mail art, which is basically making a work of art the size of a postcard that you then send through the mail to a friend or family member. Uh, and if you get lucky, they might actually send one back. The other thing I wanted to show here, I found a box of postcards at an antique store once, and I gave myself the challenge of either to alter that postcard with just one or two uh, collage elements. So the postcard actually had a bear uh, you know, coming out of the woods, and I decided that the man with the boxing gloves, unaware that the bear was coming up behind him, was kind of visually intriguing. Similarly, I took this image of kind of this moonlit pond, and I turned it into, I don't know, Loch Ness with this giant goldfish going down and coming up. So it's just a way to play with pictures, have fun with uh, you know, putting things that don't necessarily belong together, together. Um, I like to make these black and white ones as well. This is a little bit of a combination of um, paper, cartoons, um, but 
I discovered this garden cart that was falling apart and it had the most magnificent black wood that was just peeling away. And so all the black wood you see here is this really fine um, veneer, almost like, um, you know, it was like thick paper and it inspired me to, uh, to create this. So when you go for a walk or when you're looking around the house, you never know what kind of uh, materials will call you um, and you know, gather them all together. So when it's collage making time, you have plenty of things at your disposal. So when you start to be a collage artist, you'll soon realize that you need lots and lots of materials before you get started. Because you know, you'll have a blank piece of paper, but then you have to have something to put on it. And unlike other artists that can make their own materials, collage artists need to have a lot of things ready to go. And so you'll see that I started, when I started my interest in collage, I just started getting as many pictures and uh, um, images um, that I could, so I had those in the, um, you know, in my files ready to go when I wanted to make a collage. So the best place to get images, um, magazines, um, old books, um, if you start at making collages and tell your friends that you're making them, you'll find that they are willing to donate old art books to you, old art catalogs, um, you know, old stamp collections. It's amazing where images can come from. And what I would recommend is when you go through those books or those magazines, if something strikes your fancy, tear it out and put it in a pile. Um, don't leave it in the magazine because you'll forget about it. Pull it out right away and make a pile of things that need to be cut out, um, cut apart and then filed. Um, you might not know what you're going to do with it yet, but if it, you like the image, if it sparks a little bit of joy in you, know, in you, it's probably an image that you'll want to use down the road. Or things that are kind of funny or you know, have wonderful pattern. Um, again, you won't be able to know when you're going to use it down the road, so just gathering as many as possible is really great. And then once you have a whole bunch of images, you know, maybe it's a day that you're not feeling very creative, maybe that's the day that you sit with a cup of tea and you cut everything out if it's an image that you want to be crisply cut out. Because there's nothing worse than when you're ready to create collages to take the time to have to cut everything out individually. It takes a lot of time. So I usually do that as a creative process and then file my images and then when I'm ready to make a collage, I have everything that I need at the ready. Um, another thing would be to um, come up with some kind of a system because again, you'll eventually have hundreds of images and you'll know that you have a dog picture somewhere but you don't want to have to go through the whole pile. So I came up with a simple uh, system of just getting some file folders and having some really big categories, you know, textures, uh, postcards, uh, things that sparkle, like my shirt, uh, animals, patterns, flowers. I mean, your categories will, be te will de depend on the kinds of things that you start to collect. Um, but it really is a helpful hint to get these things down and organized so that when you're ready to create, you're ready to go. Um, but again, tell friends and family that you're, you're going to be a collage artist and that you'd love some of their high quality magazines. You'd love some of their uh, books that are filled with pictures uh, that they do not get back because you're going to alter them tear out those images and make a pile and then start cutting. Um, and then you'll be ready when it's time to make your collage. In addition to all your paper and vintage uh, photographs and postcards that you start collecting, you also might consider uh, collecting small, light, um, three-dimensional things that you might attach to um, a collage. I just brought a simple sample here. Um, I have some dollhouse frames that sometimes would be nice to um, you know, feature, uh, you know, put around a person's face or highlight them. Um, feathers always work really nicely and they're very light and easy to glue. Um, maybe some small toys that are flat and light and easy to glue, some stars, some jewelry fittings. Um, I just thought I would bring a small collection here of things that, you know, although you're not going to be using 3D in the kit, um, as you get more and more into it, it might just be something to consider. And the other thing to consider is, um, for those things to have scar boxes, um, which are really nice ways to keep all your um, three-dimensional things together. And you can file things similarly to the flat files where you can have a cigar box of feathers, a cigar box of you know, uh, shapes, um, a, a cigar box filled with celestial you know, suns and moons and stars. Um, it just helps when, you're, when you have that spark of imagination in your head to know exactly what you have and where to go get it from. Oh, mini starfish, 
also, you know, I've used starfish a lot in my collages, and so you can get some of those and keep them in the box, and when you're inspired, you'll know where to get them. So let's take a look at art kit number one that came in your blue box. Um, it's filled with all kinds of wonderful crafting materials that we put together uh, just for you. Um, there's a pair of scissors, even though we know you have probably have scissors at your house. We thought, well, let's try to make it as easy as possible. Um, a pair of glue sticks. And I like using glue sticks for collage because it's, they're not as moist. Um, when you're working with paper, if you put a lot of Elmer's glue on the back of it, it would start to wrinkle up and you'd have to wait for it to relax. Um, a glue stick, because it's not so moist, it just allows you to work a lot faster. And these are all acid-free and good for, um, you know, you know your, your masterpiece will last a long time. We sent you a small cutting board, and this will just help you when you're cutting things out if you're using a, uh, an X-Acto knife that is included in the kit um, so that you're, uh, and it has a cutting surface so that you can cut without cutting through or damaging your table. Um, we went to our local uh, frame shop and we got mat board that we cut for you in three sizes, a four by four, a five by seven, and an eight by 10. And again, these are easy, they come in different colors. You all have a different set, so don't worry about the color that you get, unless you love the color, and then you can use that, or you can cover the whole thing over with um, a piece of paper, you know, the collage materials. Um, you'll notice that many of them have two different colors on either side, so that's a choice of what's your front, what's your back. Some of the matte board will actually have a texture, like a weave, or maybe even a velvet, and if that's the case, you can choose to use that side, or just turn it over and do the flat side. So you have a lot of options with the mat board. And then in the bag, we've also put two band-aids. Hopefully you won't use those. Be very careful when you're using the X-Acto knife because it's very sharp. Um, we gave you a small bag filled with vintage uh, postage stamps. A lot of fun to use in collage. Um, you know, I, buy, I bought them in a giant collection, and we've just slowly made them into smaller batches for you all. Hopefully there's something in your batch that will inspire you. And then I culled through my collection of images and divided them up evenly. So everybody who got a craft kit has a very unique set of images. They're all different. Um, we put in a few pieces of fabric, because that's always fun to work with. You have some cutout images, so pre-cut, ready to go you know, maybe some ef uh, ephemera. Um, but then we also gave you whole images, um, some patterns, and then pages of art magazines. Um, and so you'll have to cut these out or just use them in their entirety, some vintage playing cards. I mean, every bag is filled with different kinds of things. So hopefully, um, you'll get some, you know, your bag will have something that sparks joy. And again, you're not limited to what's in the bag. We just wanted to get you started. You might have some magazines at home. You might already have a collection of collage material, um, but we wanted to get you started. Um, we wanted to get you excited about the different kinds of images. And so some are cut out and some can be torn and some can be uh, ready to go. So I thought I would just demonstrate a little bit how I would approach making a collage. Um, this is an image from the Saturday Evening Post that I just, I've always kind of loved. I've had it in my collection in one of the flat drawers for years of this woman trying to decide which fabric to buy and this man kind of modeling it as a dress so she can kind of visualize that. Um, I've already started to, um, I glued it to the 8x10 piece that you have in your kit. Um, the glue stick probably, you know, that's a lot of surface area. So I actually use some Elmer's craft, uh, craft Bond spray adhesive to spray over it just to make that part go faster. Um, but you can use the glue stick. It'll just take a little bit longer. And then I like to um, use my, the X-Acto knife and just trim off the edges so I know exactly what the composition um, of the image will look like because, you know, it, it obviously went off the edges. And don't throw anything away yet because you, there might be something in this, on these edges that we want to use later. Um, it has the same kind of colorways in it. Or if we end up making a mistake and we need to rip something out, it's easier to patch when you have something that matches. So that should be pretty clean. And now we know exactly you know, what our composition looks like. Before I glued it on, I kind of made sure I knew where these folks were going to be. Um, 
I thought because it's the kind of a scene of a fabric store, it might be nice to have a little bit more fabric. Um, and again, if I go off, I can always trim later. I won't do a complete gluing of these pieces because, you know, for time. But I just wanted to show you that when I do glue, I tend to use a magazine or a, a catalog that I don't want anymore. And I glue on the entire, um, I cover the entire piece that I'm gluing with the glue stick on the paper. And then I just turn it to a fresh page. So I'm never, you know, I never have a, a page that's too sticky to work on. Just something that I've learned and I really like that. So I'm going to start by giving this a little bit more fabric, the fabric store, a little bit more fabric to begin with. And again, I would glue the entire thing in reality, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to be doing it with a little dab here and there. Um, I also wanted, I saw this image of this lady who's looking pretty forlorn out her window, and I just thought, well, I can turn that into an interior and include it here, as if that window is now part of the cabinet. Of course, she doesn't have a dress. Um, and I have this wonderful uh, piece of paper that was part of a Japanese fan that's silver metallic with cobwebs on it. And I thought, well, that's an intriguing shape. It's kind of dress-like. And so we'll just give that to her there. And now she has a beautiful, long, goth dress. Um, the man is looking really quite happy, but maybe we can transform him into somebody completely new by putting this fiddler completely over his head and change the whole meaning of the piece. So now she's no longer buying a dress, but she's watching this man entertain her in the store. Um, I can also change the store a little bit by bringing in some extra furniture. Here's a table with some antiques on it, so we'll place that down there. Um, it is a fabric store, so let's put a little bit more fancy fabric and furniture in it. Here's an, an ottoman. This woman is looking a little um, black and white, so why don't we give her a colorful cape to kind of jazz that up. Um, I think we can use a few more antiques here in this, on this tabletop filled with wonderful things. So we'll take this sumo wrestler sculpture that I painstakingly cut out and we'll add that. Again, the scene is coming alive, but it's, it's very silly. It's just things that I kind of liked from my collection and I'm bringing them together. And last but not least, who doesn't like a dog? And we'll sit the dog right on the ottoman. He's waiting for all these people to be done with this activity so that they can go home. Oops. And what I would do after it's all dry and nice and flat is I would trim it again. So I'll turn it over, trim away anything that overlaps. It's a little bit thicker than I thought. It's not quite dry yet, but I can s I can cheat. Uh, one more little thing. Oh, actually, I guess the uh, the fabric is a little bit lower than I thought. Let's do a quick fix here. Actually, mistakes like this happen all the time, and very often plan B is better than plan A. So just allow it to happen. Now that curtain, now that window has a little bit of a curtain. And the end result is silly, zany, and very different than how it started. And again, you're just playing with pictures, having a good time, creating something that never existed before with things that existed in other situations. Now before we, we are completely done, I mean a lot of this collage are, were things that I cut out and pretty um, crisply, but we also said you, the, this class is called, you know, uh, 
rip it out, cut it out. So let's also try, remember this is the top of that magazine that I kept out. And I just thought, wouldn't it be interesting, let's see if I can get some of these letters. I'm going to tear out the P, and I'm going to tear out the S. And because this is such an intriguing scene, we don't know what's going to happen next. You know, there's more to the story, kind of like when you have more to tell in a letter. So let's call this collage P. S. And now I think we'll call this complete. I wanted to share a few other ideas that I have with you about when you're working and you know how do you know when you're done. Um, very often I'll be working on several collages at a time, and so I'll have different piles of materials. Um, it is helpful sometimes to walk away and then come back and see it with fresh eye. Um, the collage that we just made, I might really like it, um, but I might be missing something. And so one of the things that I will often do is I will take a picture of it um, with my iPhone, because then when I look at the picture, um, I just see it in a different light. You see it, you know, and you can carry this around with you and, and maybe, you know, look at it while you're waiting for something else to happen and you'll have an idea of where, you know, is it balanced? Is the composition nice? Does it need something more? Um, it's just, a, you know, kind of a, another tool to have a second pair of eyes because things do look differently, um, you know, when you're looking at them straight on or when you're looking at them on your phone. So this has been really helpful for me and also um, if I have this re record of it and I find another image somewhere else, I can see whether it's going to work or not. I wanted to show you a couple of collages that I made years ago um, that I really like and just it might uh, give you some ideas. Um, for a while I was using things from, I was using tintypes um, that I would Xerox so that I didn't have to, you know, use them up. And then I would put other things around them or incorporate um, things with them. Uh, for example, these are real um, uh, seedlings, maple seedlings that I collected from the yard and turned them into wings. So these Victorians are now uh, fairies. And so just again, a combination of you know, Xeroxes, things cut out of uh, books and magazines, and then found items. This other collage, I apologize if it's a little sassy, but I wanted to demonstrate how you can tear things um, as well as cut things. And so this is a combination of some maps, um, you know, some historic ephemera that I literally would just cut and, I mean, tear without using scissors. Um, I use uh, more of those historic uh, tin types, so kind of those Victorian men um, that I would Xerox and then tear. And then using a fitness magazine, I would go through and try to find uh, a torso that kind of matched. And so it was kind of fun playing with scale and really looking to see if I could overlap um, something old to something new and have it make sense um, and create these little um, you know, narratives. Again, as you're collaging, sometimes it's fun to have the scale kind of wacky where one thing is much bigger in the collage than it would be in the real world, kind of a little bit of a surreal approach. But it's also fun you know, when you can go through and you know, find images that marry so well. Um, again, it's just trial and error. You need a lot of images to make this happen, uh, but there's something really thrilling when you can take two images that have nothing to do with each other and give them a new life together. Um, and so, you know, again, this is uh, blown up. This is much smaller in its original, but that's another thing you can do is once you have an original that you like, going to a color Xerox place and having it blown up, you can make multiple and have it in any scale that you want. Another way to kind of get over creative block is giving yourself the challenge of making a collage every day. Um, you know, getting a book that you, um, you know, will collect your collages in and just find some time to, you know, maybe it's not um, a big work of art, but it's doodling with images. Um, this one here is a collage I made a few years ago, and it was while I was at a trip in New York, and I decided that I would spend the day, you know, going from museum to museum, but when I found pieces of paper either in the street, attached to a telephone pole, uh, maybe my museum brochure, 
whatever I gathered that day, I was going to use in one single collage. Um, so I actually brought the, uh, my, glue, my glue stick and a pair of scissors with me on the trip. Um, and, you know, I gathered things up one day, and before I went to bed that night, I made sure that I made a collage. And it's just a great way to get some discipline. I wasn't expecting it to be terrific, but, I mean, I loved this one, um, but it was really documenting my little day in New York. So a way of using collage as a way to journal an experience. And also wanting to make it pretty immediate that I wasn't putting it off to do it when I got back home, but I was going to do it in my hotel room so I knew that it was done, and it became kind of a tangible part of the trip. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope my, my approach to collage is unhelpful and that it will inspire you to try your hand at making collage. I'm really hoping that there's something in the bag for you that really sparks joy or sparks your imagination. And again, if there's something in the bag that you like, you can also you know, find things in your own life to go along with it. So you don't need to use everything just from the bag. This is just really your starter set because we wanted you to be able to, be able to get started right away. Um, if you have any questions about things that I talked about while you're watching this video, um, you're more than welcome to send me an email, and I would love to answer that um, technique-wise or anything that I can do. My email is david at flowgris, F-L-O-G-R-I-S dot O-R-G, Florence Griswold. Uh, and that's my work email, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. I was hoping you'd also take some pictures of your creativity um, while you're making it or when the final product, and do send it to the folks at Asylum Hill Congregational Church. We'd love to see how this kit and this tutorial inspired you, and um, hopefully you'll eventually be obsessed as I am, and you'll have a cabinet filled with images, and whenever you're um, have some free time or some creative time, you go to that clean space and you make a collage and you just let your imagination run wild. Thank you, have a great day, and have fun making collages.